Hey everyone, what's up? It's Chapman here. And I know, it's a Tutorial Tuesday. I actually nailed one for the first time in 100 days. And I haven't done a tutorial in a long time, so I hope I still got it. But in this episode, I'm going to show you guys the fastest and most efficient way to drain an ocean monument. Now, doing this is going to be like a little game called Leapfrog. Andy, Leapfrog, go! go. Do me, do me, yeah! You know that game? This involves a fancy little redstone machine that is incredibly simple to build, and your prerequisite farms are going to be a tree farm, a blaze or lava farm for fuel in order to dry your sponge, and possibly, if your world or server allows it, a sand duper. If you can get your hands on a sand duper, it makes all of this, I mean, it just cuts hours. It cuts literally hours off of it. And now, these are the materials that we are going to need in order to drain the ocean monument, not including the sand that you need for the ring. You only need five to six sands of gravel or sand for this. And that is because the center section right here, these are the longest sections, and they take about two, two and a half shulker boxes of sand. And that is depending on how deep your monument is. You also need at least six stacks of sponge. So go raiding those ocean monuments. You want to have three dry at all time and then three drying at all time. And then you need your redstone. The technique that we are using with our sponge here basically leaves no downtime for removing water. All we got to do is just, yeah, run the rows, start sponging, and then by the time we run out of sponge doing this, we come back, collect our sponge from here, and then we just keep removing water. Now, before we begin, monuments come in both deep and shallow, and most farms only require the top part of the monument. So I wouldn't even bother with trying to find an extra deep monument unless you want it. And the size of the circle is also going to be up to you. This circle here, the blue one, this is 75 blocks from the center of the monument. And this giant sphere right here, this represents the spawning radius of all the mobs that are going to be inside this farm. So that's the spawning radius down there. I am standing on Y168. You can see the spawning radius of the mobs is just to the outside of the ring. Okay, and we have plenty of room left inside the farm to spawn any mobs that we need and to bring them up to the surface. So this is the area here. That is the area there standing on Y168 that you can use to create your farm. It's a massive area. So if you want to bring your diameter of your circle a little bit smaller and you want to go up just a little bit higher with your placement, you can do that. Just remember, 128 blocks is the max radius for all mobs in Minecraft. And to do your ring, it's actually very simple. You can use websites to check your circle size and then just follow along block by block. Or you can use the mini hood mob to generate one for you. Both are incredibly simple. This blue line right here that you can see, this is the mini hood mob. You can toggle the blocks on and off if you want to. And then to begin, all you have to do is just go along the outside of your ring or whatever you want to do. And then once your dirt ring is laid out, all you have to do is just come back and then just start putting down your sand. This is the slowest and most painful part out of the whole thing, the ring. So grab all of the materials that you are going to need, run your ring around, set yourself up a small little area like this where you can put your fuel for your furnaces and where you can put your sponge in order to dry it. And once you have everything ready, we're going to be starting in the long section here just so we can get an approximate time for how long the longest one takes. And then every single row after that should take less time because it's, it's going to be shorter. And basically, we are running two rows at once. One row here in order to contain the water, and then another row in order to leapfrog it over and give us our little gap here in order to suck all of the water out with the sponges. So get out your gravel or your sand and bring along a little bit of redstone. Bring along this right here. One piston, two observers, a sticky, and then something to power the sticky. And wherever you start, it's going to be the same thing. We are going to leave a four or five block gap. I like to do a four block gap just because I find it more efficient to remove the sponge. So one, two, three, four. And then on the fifth block, I'm going to run out six or seven blocks in a row. And then back here at the start, I'm going to leave a one block gap and I'm going to place down a regular piston with an observer facing out. Then I'm going to leave a gap and place another observer with a sticky piston behind it. And then we are going to power that sticky piston. And you can see this is how fast the piston is pumping or should be pumping. If we just tried to do it like this, you can see the piston for some reason doesn't pump. So you want to make sure that you set it up like that. And then you are just going to power the sticky piston. And then from here, all we need to do is grab our sand. And then we just need to find the sweet spot, which is typically right about right here. And look at how fast we are pushing sand. That was four rows right there in real time, or four columns. 
and that is how fast and how easy it is. Now, we can do up to 12 long. We're going to show you that, but what I need to do is we need to make sure that we go down first, and we've got to clear out all of the kelp or anything that is in line with what we see going on here. Now, you can see I've already gone around and removed most of the kelp, but if there's any kelp down there, when the sand lands on it, it likes to just break, so you got to go around and remove it, but that is how easy it is. Look at how fast we are placing sand, and all we have to do is just stand here. Once you run out of sand in your inventory, just use your pick block to grab more sand. And there, and just like that, we have run a full row of 12 sand out, and it took absolutely zero effort and zero time whatsoever. Now, to continue this, all we've got to do is just go and remove all of this top layer right here. Come back to the beginning, and then we just need to turn off all of this and collect our items. And then at the front of the sand, we just need to repeat the same process. So we are going to leave a one block gap and we're going to place a piston facing forward with an observer behind it with its face facing out. We're going to leave a one block gap and place another observer with its face in and then a sticky piston behind it and then power it. From here, we can just pick block and we can continue this process until we are completely done. Let's see how long it takes us to do a full row. Okay, and I'm going to have to time that in the editor, but that was literally no time. That was like 40 seconds, maybe. Now, all you need to do is you just need to repeat that until you are all the way across the entire section. Remember to remove any kelp that is in the way, so that way it doesn't break your sand blocks or your gravel blocks. Okay, and that whole row took just under 17 minutes to complete. And trust me, that is a lot faster than having to stand here and go like this. Oh, I even fell. See? It is a lot faster than having to do it that way. And that section right there also cleared out two full shelter boxes full of sand. But now it's time for the fun part. It's time to get the sponge and start removing the water. And like I said, for this, you want to try to have at least three sponges or three stacks of sponges drying while keeping at least three stacks of sponges on you as well at all times. And then to drain this, what we're going to do is we're going to keep one stack of sponges in our left hand, and then we're going to keep our hoe in our right hand. And then starting from the corner, we are just going to place down one sponge, and then we are going to remove it. And right here where we see the water starting to flow down and the next one beside it, this is one of the two blocks where we are going to place down the next sponge. And you can see it starts to give us this little bit of a cascading way down. Now we can either do it on that one or we can do it on the full block. It's completely up to you. But I'm already taking way too long to do this because the way that I do this is I just go remove, place, remove, place, remove, place, remove. And now you don't have to be exactly perfect with your placement of your sponge on the first rows, but I mean, just try to... We're just taking down the first layer here. And then just like that, we have our first row and first layer all the way done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just jump into the water. And then right where we see these little high points here, we're just going to place our sponge right underneath that. And we are just going to go along. And same thing, where you see the water start to flow down, that is the area where we want to place our sponge and then just quickly remove it. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to basically repeat that going back the other direction. And we're going to take our sponge and we're going to make sure we're targeting the high points of wherever the water is. And we're going to remove the sponge as we go. And then while you're doing this, believe it or not, as you come back, you start to collect your sponge that you're leaving behind. So you don't even have to worry about any of it despawning. You don't really have to worry about even going to collect any of it. And after just three stacks of sponges, and only, I don't even know, I'm going to have to time it in the thing. That is how much water we have removed in just that amount of time, and it hasn't taken hardly any effort at all. So now all we need to do since I'm out of sponges is I need to just go down and collect 
which like I said, is actually pretty easy when you can just fly across the water. And then we just need to drop our sponges off here at the drying machine. We need to obviously collect our perfectly dry sponge that we have right here. And then we can just continue. Now you're gonna wanna continue this and all you're gonna wanna do is basically just target the high points with your sponge and then put your sponge just a few blocks below it in order to bring the water down. Now, as you're doing this, you're gonna go along and you're gonna find whatever technique is best for you or whatever you find is removing the most water. But like I said, the main thing that you're trying to keep in mind is that you're just trying to focus on the high points of the water and then you're just trying to bring them down but eventually you're gonna find your rhythm and then once you do, you're gonna find yourself at the bottom of the pit very fast. And the first part of this took seven minutes in total while explaining it and the second half of this took 11 minutes. So 18 minutes in total in order to remove the water on this nice long spot. Another 17 minutes in order to run the sand or the gravel across the thing. So all in all, a long section takes just over half an hour in order to complete. So judging just by that math, which I'm not very good at, we can see that just by doing this four sections right here that I have marked out, this is gonna take you about four hours to complete. And that means that the other half of the circle is gonna take four hours too as well. And then you still have the ends. So just by that, we can predict that it's gonna take about 10 to 12 hours for you to drain this ocean monument. And that is with a mob switch on or the mobs turned off somehow. And that's with like nonstop burnt fingertip gameplay. Now, to collect your walls, it's actually very simple. All we need to do is we just need to have some torches on us. And then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove the bottom one and place a torch. And you can see all of the stuff comes falling down. It all breaks on top of this. Wait a minute, where did it go? What the heck just happened there? It's not supposed to disappear. My game is broken. But either way, that is how you're supposed to collect your walls is you just do that right there. And I don't know, the sand is supposed to break. And then once your wall is down, all you need to do is just go back through and easily collect all of your torches. And any ones that you do leave down, I mean, doesn't really matter because it's just going to light the area up anyway. But once that's done, all you need to do is just leapfrog your wall over, count one, two, three, four, or five block gap. It's completely up to you. Run your row of dirt and then take your piston, leave your gap, and then start over one more time. And doing this technique here, it actually gives you a little bit of a break so that you can kind of just like chill and not really have to do much. And then once your wall is completely run across the whole thing, it is go time and sponge removal time. And doing it this way, this means that you don't have to go and collect too much sand from the overworld. I've done two of these in the hardcore world and let me tell you, I ran all of my walls first and that took hours to do. And I regret it now because I wish I would have just done this leapfrog method because it would have saved me literally hours in collecting sand. So I figured I'd share it here with you guys, but that's it. That's how you drain an ocean monument. I don't know, pretty quick. If you're good at redstone, I'm sure you could run some sort of flying machine in order to run back and forwards from here in order to remove the water for you. But that's up to you. That's how I did it. That's how I drained my ocean monument. That's the first tutorial Tuesday in over a hundred days. I hope it wasn't too rusty. Thank you so much for watching you guys. I hope this helps. Love you. See you on the next one.